And this is my old office. Last year, I went from an outdoor foldable table as my office desk and built my own epoxy river table. After doing some online research, I really liked the look of the red cedar accents of the table and decided to focus on a modern rustic theme. As always, the first step is decluttering and cleaning up the room to see what workable space that we have to work with. The home office has to be clutter-free, clean, functional, and welcoming. These IKEA Alex drawers allow me to store away my clutter, gives me easy access to what I need, serves as the foundation for my river table, and also looks nice. If you haven't watched already, I have a few videos and shorts outlining how I made this river table. In order to protect the table, I added these non-slip furniture pads above the drawers. They've worked pretty well so far. If you're interested, I've linked them in the description box below. My first desk accessory was a monitor stand, which is also made out of red cedar. The goal was to keep the desk clean, and I also added a sliding drawer for more storage. Not to mention that monitor stands allow for better ergonomics and posturing as well. And of course, you can't have an office without a magnetic glass board. This may be overly excessive, but I've found it useful when my partner needs to know my availability in a pinch. Plus, the nostalgia when I used to use chalkboards in the past. I'm rocking the HP X27Q, which is a QHD monitor. It's overall a budget-friendly monitor, which I picked up a few years ago. Unfortunately, I can't take advantage of the 4K on my PS5, but overall pretty good refresh rate and free sync technology. I also picked up this desk mat on Amazon, which was only $10. The back is made out of Swede, which prevents the mat from sliding, and the top is made out of PVC, which is very easy to clean. Overall, it gives the desk a very good aesthetic. To organize the cables on my desk, I use the Wavelink Pro as my cable solution to connect my MacBook and accessories. This is my first docking station, and I'd say it's quite versatile. It has multiple USB-C ports and HDMI and display ports on the back. It charges my laptop because it provides 100 watts of charging to my MacBook. On top of that, there is a micro SD and SD slot on the front to expand the functionality. My only gripe is most of the ports are on the back of the dock, and every time I want to connect something, I have to pull out the dock station. To keep everything clean, I installed this extendable 31 inch cable tray. This cable tray had an under desk table clamping system. I really didn't want to drill into my river table and this was a great solution. I routed all my display cables along the underside of the table and into my power brick. I also chose a power brick that was a must have for an office setup. The power strip had outlets well spaced apart, three sided with 24 outlets and three USB ports, which was more than enough to power my office setup. For my keyboard and mouse setup, I have the Logitech K850 and M720 combo. Both have Bluetooth connectivity for up to three devices. To maximize my productivity, I customize both the keyboard and the mouse based on my individualized applications. This is done by downloading the Logitech options. In reality, this is my fiance's keyboard and I don't really use it. I have also added a Motsani keyboard for the design, programmability, and tactile typing. The green keyboard and the cherry blossom keycaps match the table and the monitor stand quite well. Instead of running back and forth between the outlet, I picked up this wireless 5 watt charger for my phone, which easily connects to my docking station. At this point, my desk looked pretty barren, so I picked up this accessory stand at IKEA. This stand came in pretty handy. For sound, I'm using the Sony WH-1000XM2. Although I've had it for many years, it's holding up pretty well. It has digital noise cancellation and touch control to change volume and skip tracks. When I'm gaming, I switch over to my entry-level gaming Astro A10 headset for my PS5. Overall, both are very good over-the-air headsets.
I'm not an audiophile and I didn't want to spend a lot, so I decided to get the Insignia Bluetooth RGB speakers. I've had a pretty good experiences with Insignia products so far. Now that most of the desk setup is complete, I focused on the rest of the room and the ambiance. To make the space match my red cedar desk, I added these floating shelves. These floating shelves don't hold too much weight, but fortunately I was able to secure them using drywall anchors. I even added these fake plants to make it look more natural. Here I'm putting together a TV stand that I got on Amazon for $35. Again, I chose this piece based on the natural rustic appearance of the composite wood. This didn't require any tools and all I had to do was twist in the PVC tubes to assemble the TV stand. Overall, the stand was very functional and allowed me to store my Switch and my PS4 and my Amazon Echo Dot Alexa speaker. I wanted to give my office a more organic feel. I made my own deep core epoxy plant stand with bow tie inlays. This involved lots of sanding, routing, and of course, waiting for the epoxy to cure. If you're interested, I've linked it in the description above. To complement this plant stand, I also bought this faux olive tree off of Amazon. I purchased these display posters a few years ago and finally have an office to put them in. The designs are created by individual artists and they aren't flimsy like traditional paper posters. They also attach to the wall via magnets, but I've found that the adhesives sometimes don't hold strong enough. Overall they're pretty good. I had to add RGB lights behind the desk panels because not only does it look cool, it also provides ambient lighting. My office doesn't have a ceiling light and clearly RGB lights aren't enough, so I paired my IKEA floor lamp with an Alexa compatible bulb so that I can adjust and change the ambient lighting in the background. To light my desk, I opted for the monitor light bar, it comes with different temperature adjustments and creates less glare and strain on the eyes during work. And that's my office setup for 2024. I think it's much better than my previous mess. The office is now more welcoming and allows me to be more productive. Let me know what you guys liked or disliked from the setup in the comments below. Hopefully I was able to give you some inspiration for your office, and if you liked this video, please like and subscribe and follow me for more.